Get <laughs> well, thank you. I think uh, getting more frightening. Uh, before now, the UNDP reports, reports that South is, uh, was, I hope, could be still say, is this, uh, the safest part of Nigeria in terms of uh, violence, whether it's political violence or acts of terror. Of course, there, in the past there have been cases of uh, kidnapping, but that has been much less in the last two years. So uh, up until this latest wave of the unknown government, uh, Satis has had no such incident. So again, what that means is that the whole country is getting enveloped in real darkness. Uh, we, we, uh, the historical spots have been northwest, northeast, and then of course we used to have uh, south south, which was a different kind of uh, 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 insecurity, more uh, mercantilist, you know, issues around the oil uh, struggle over oil ownership, and then get got into criminality, and of course got the amnesty, and then southwest now we've seen um, a heavy one around uh, uh, farmers' headers and self determination. So primarily, it's the question now is if you are dealing with an economy that's tanking massively, if you are dealing with uh, a growing, almost like uh, quadrupling unemployment in the last five years, uh, dealing with a COVID situation, uh, dealing with basic lack of governance, and then the destruction of 2023. And then you are caught up in a mixed storm of violent attack against state institutions, like and the police. against security. Agencies. Security, I mean, this is at the heart mm -hmm. of governmentality. So if, you, if you're dealing with that and dealing with the Boko Haram situation, then probably you're a country that is in almost terminal distress. So you really need to do something. This is really bad, dangerous, and really bad, really bad. Bad for human development, bad for any strategic and concentrated focus on, uh, on, on governance, on development, and bad for even the st structuring a, re a recreation of Nigeria. I mean, the Northern Elders Forum meeting is talking about how do we get Nigeria right. So these uh, crisis, uh, these violent uh, events in the South is now piles more and more confusion and complexity on uh, what looks like a situation that has gone out of control, basically. Now, is the government aware of this situation? The way you have painted it, a lot of people share uh, this situation that we're on the brink. Uh, based on the actions and inactions of the government, do they share these concerns? I think the government uh, has a psychology. You know, uh, the government has been oriented over time in Nigeria, political leadership, to expect that crisis will run out. You know, Nigeria has been a country that uh, its leaders never solved any problem, you know, clearly and comprehensively. From 1959, when the constitutional conference to give back to independent Nigeria, several issues were discussed. Take, for example, issue around Sharia. Do you want to be a modern, secular, democratic state? Do you want to be a theocratic state? Nigeria couldn't solve sort that of problem with any fact. Even when the constitution is clear and explicit. Yeah, but then the same constitution creates confusion. I mean, you said in section 10, there should be no state of religion. Again, you create a lot of exception creating religious courts and other kinds of things that really equivocate. So the concern is itself a, 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 an evidence of that incoherence and that kind of inability to, to really decide and act upon it. We've gone through a civil war. The issues that arose from that civil war around citizenship, around rule of law, we are still repeating themselves. So, so essentially, Nigerian political leaders have, that they have been oriented towards avoidance of trouble and hoping that a, a, a favorable tide mm. will blow away the crisis and will get back to as long as this you don't look at it, and then it the oil, the oil, oil, the oil, the oil, it will exactly. The oil economy, which does not require too much of brain work to create the world, means that the the level of executive attention you would have elsewhere, where you people have to really solve problems to create wealth, don't exist. So our leaders solve no problems because the next wave of wealth. The only time we get panicky is when oil prices crash dramatically, and then they're not to share the center. But when we see human capital depleting, when we see an environment for economic development strangulating, when we see violence, look at Kakadura, look at North East, Northwest, we've not seen any level of seriousness to deal with the issue of coexistence. We've not seen leaders show seriousness. So in this larger crisis developing the country, you see that what will be prime will be politicking. You know, we assure you make it, we Peter will make it, we are to come back. Basically, our leaders will be um, um, to say the Nero we fiddling mm. where room burns. So that, that, that's clearly, uh, do you think it's a problem of capacity or lack of it? 
I think it's two, well, two, two problems. One is the problem of oriented structure. You see, the, 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 to govern Nigeria, to, to win uh, power in Nigeria, you don't have to demonstrate responsibility. So, so what that means, therefore, is that there's no incentive on political leaders to be responsible. We don't elect our leaders because these people have struggled with solving Nigerian problem. They will just elect them because it's ethnically convenient or somehow a favorable wind. Look at the kind of guys who are on the stage running for presidency. I mean, particularly the guy from Kogi. Essentially, what I suggest is that, look, if you're going to be present in Nigeria because you've shown some level of commitment to solving Nigerian problem, then many guys will be off the mark. But because there's no, the structure of Nigerian politics does not kind of create a sense of commitment and responsibility. And then, of course, the payout is less. If people don't solve problems, they don't get to lose elections. They don't get to, they don't, they're not politically damnified. So these two factors reinforce themselves, the structure and, of course, the lack of capacity. So the structure creates lack of capacity, and lack of capacity reinforces that structural problem. So we have leaders who don't have the capacity in the first place, and who, there's no orientation, there's no incentive for them to actually have the capacity to solve these problems, because solving them gives no political mileage. Not solving this problem, allows them probably to even benefit. Look at the way Kavilia Manad, the governor of Mosel, says it's political openness. Now, mm. if that's if it's political openness. Yes, you well, mentioned yeah. at some point unknown government, but mm. I, I wanted to take it up with you that the former inspector general of police mentioned uh, IPOP and ESN, the mm. governor, mm. Uh, while the vice president was inspecting the damage, also mentioned ESN, mm -hmm. and just yesterday he's talking of political opponents. Now, look at the former IG. Uh, I mean, the Nigerian police with all the good intention and competence of the men and officers have been notorious for solving no problem. Whether it's delegates killing, whether it's uh, Bebolige, all kinds of, I mean, I had an incident where my office was bungled. I went to the police to report. They're not to anybody to help find the answer, but just to make sure I save myself any legal trouble. An officer told me, do you have a camera? I said, I don't have a camera. He said, how do you how solve the problem? And he confided in me that, look, most of these people will see the parade and say we arrested people. He just, he just, going for low targets. You don't have any camera. Now, by the way, we've not seen, nobody has in possession of different snapshots of these activities. These people mm -hmm. were said to move in, in, in log vehicles, buses, sang so that song around the close to the government High security house, area. area for 30 minutes. Eh? Then when the I'm hearing came, that right there, you have the government house, you have the SSS, the director of the SSS, SSS director, director, the police, police is there. police headquarters, the commander of the um, um, uh, uh, battalion mm. lives close by there. Mm. And then even that's the yeah, one in uh, Obinze. Obinze. But the commander lives mm. close by there. So uh, that's that's actually the, the, the third arm zone of Imo State, if you mm. like to say. Now the question is the three arm zone, the three arm zone of, of, of Imo State. Of of yeah. Now if you, the question then is this has happened for three hours. And the police said, glibly as they normally report, press release, okay, that we'll engage them in gunfire mm. and for we'll stop, we we'll repel them from getting access to the armory. Only one scratch to a police mm. officer. He didn't shot down anybody. End of the day, no pictures. So you have you are talking about is IPOB. First and foremost, is there any special fiscal design of IPOB persons? Mm. Assuming it's some hoodlums, you saw them. How do you know it's IPOB? Do they have a special mark? Okay, if they have their flags, if they have their songs. So the point is by now, we have seen videos that tell us that the police is working on something. Look or at the Capitol. But, but the governor yeah. mentioned lead that he has credible intelligence that is, that to, is, that is now political opponents. Now, if look at the, the IG who is the consider of intelligence, mm. supposedly, says Cavillier without any waiting for hours, says mm. IPOB ESS. The governor, who himself is the chief security officer, with the, with, the same, with the same IG says, originally says uh, IPOB. Now he says his politician have a lead. Now, by now, we should have been hearing about those taken to custody. If, if it's really, I mean, this is the height of attack on the state. And if politicians are behind it, what we'll be hearing would have been that stories that uh, the police would have addressed us that mm. they have had discussions with four or five leading politicians in the state. Mm who are suspected, they may not be the people. They, they have even made arrests. Arrests, mm. they into custody and say, look, mm. but nothing. So this is basic, it's, it's, it's equivalent of Lai Muhammad coming to tell you, or uh, 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 Sheikh Ugaba always saying, the names of government, everything. And then the government makes it very, almost like a joke. It says, look, this is orchestrated to embarrass Buhari government. So an activity localized in Oware is now orchestrated to embarrass the government. So uh, the question is, look, this is the same, Lack of rigor 
and lack of responsibility. Is it to draw sympathy from the federal government? First is that uh, diversionary. Basically, look, the government is clueless, both at the state and the, uh, at, the, at the federal level, to deal with security issues. We don't have the capacity. We've not built that capacity. How can you have that kind of place? You have no cameras, street cameras. Or they have, but they have not decided to share with to us. Share. Yet. Now, if they have not said share, then that that's goes to the confidence we have the police. Now, if they're, they're not sharing because they are working on it, mm -hmm. and maybe in the next two days they should. But we know that, look, Nobody has ever shared with us those entail. Again, we've seen several cases unresolved that looks even less so, more like uh, unlike this one. Totally is the fact that if you say it's a political enemies, I mean, no governor will come out to say that if they don't have concrete evidence. And by now, we'd have been hearing some persons invited for questioning. Mm -hmm. So clearly, this is just a cop out in my view. It's, it's, it's to, the easy way to say is look, this attack against me. And then, of course, you bring the presidency into it to create a sense of support. So the pre I'm going to report, I'm going to file a story to the center. We'll go there, we'll talk about look, this is PDP. Since we got up election against them, mm. they're angry. Or this is Okorocha, we're fighting him. That is really what it is. There's nobody who is seriously thinking and working. And again, the structure, the question is do you have the capacity to do this? Now, how can Iraq tag, look, any known state terror group in Nigeria is still weak, S not like sophisticated. Just opposed with the, with the, with the capacity yeah. they should have. So mm -hmm. we don't expect that in two hours shootout with terrorists, quote unquote, mm -hmm. you don't have casualties. That you don't on have both sides. On both sides. You don't even have vehicles that are abandoned. You know, maybe they in, in flight, they left their property uh, vehicle run away. Mm -hmm. the, the police said one of the Asiana buses was left behind and they're working on that lead. Okay, so, mm. so, so that at least one. On that, that. That, that, that's a mm. good story. Mm. So, with that now, if you get a person who holds a Siena recession, easy. By now, they should be talking about his IPOB, his uh, petitions. The police would have been working on these things, and maybe in a couple of hours, they'll give us the first briefing. We have got a lead, we're mm. working on it. That would have, the, in fact, the that's government, the standard. The the, the, should uh, be and a, a security issue as big as that, there should be daily. Briefings from, from the police. police. You see, the governor's own will be to come and talk about, talk to the citizens and say, look, we are so sad, we have been attacked, this is blah, blah, blah. Build confidence. Is, I will allow the commissioner of police to say more about that. Mm -hmm. They'll they say the governor is to receive briefing about what's going on. He's not the investigator. And now what you see in Nigeria, the governor goes first and politicize the crisis. But first, often, it's always about political opponents. I mean, political opponents to embarrass you is to go and take a very little action, attacking a police formation. Mm. is high risk. So if politicians want to embarrass the government, mm. they're not going to call up people for protest. What they will do is to mobilize arms and attack high risk subjects. So if you look at that crime, it has to be done by three kind of persons. One is a strong ideological group that has that declared war against the federal government. Two, some kind of fifth columnist, some person highly placed with government authorities' capacity to create some kind of crisis, destruction, or to incent, you know, uh, attack against people, you know, that's one narrative of mass mm -hmm. and others. Look, this is really uh, the, the federal government or agents, dark agents of the government, trying to create situation for an attack against these people. Third could, could, could be very high criminal elements that, for example, if a terror group has known persons detained or some criminal outfits, and they go there, they'll kill, they'll shoot and kill, and get their guys out and flee. So th th this shows that this is not something, classical work of my political opponents who, who are struggling for delegates with me for uh, APC, uh, control of APC party, or the guy I had bumped off from being governor who is planning for the next election. Th those are not the classical things that political opponents do to undermine your government. This is a high level criminal, almost terror actions that you don't expect that politicians will glibly undertake as some of political, you know, po op op uh, attack make against. Political if, against. If, if they do that, that that's 42 high-level crime. Uh, and you expect that those comments will be backed up with evidence and reaction, especially they've been questioned, put into custody, being debriefed by mm. police and SSS uh, operatives. And then we'll know that no, this is not just the governor uh, coming to a uh, 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 television studio to to probably create sympathy that he's been, you know, he's under siege because of the way he came to power. So I, I don't really buy, give much credit and credence mm. to the governor's uh, mm. view. Mm. This is a new dimension. 
uh, we've not seen the police has uh, security institutions have not been direct attack. They have been collateral or you know indirect. Maybe uh, they, they get killed in the course of uh, of terror activities. But now we've seen apart from Boko Haram, where we see direct insurgents taking on government mm -hmm. in combat. So it's a war situation. But here in peacetime, we've seen police you know uh, sporadic opportunistic attack on even military formation For military formation mm -hmm. I've, uh, we've seen now now three issues here one is the fact that this is alarming mm -hmm. this goes to show two things before now we, we, we never had this it looks like the police is now a victim of mass anger or some kind of uh, you know if you like terror attack relating deriving from a certain idea that the state police represents something either dangerous we saw it from the SARS crisis you know that's when we started seeing Police been attacked. Then after the SARS protest, the SARS protest. After that, we not see it happening. It's been the South is now. One narrative has been that this is this is like, you know, a revenge mission mm -hmm. against very brutal police attack on youths. I, I have been up and talking. In, in, in 2018, I was one of those who tried to get 113 women, you know, were arrested for protests, branded IPOB, and detained in horrifying situation. In fact, one of them was a new, um, gave, just gave birth newly, and you know, in, in, in they were in terrible situations. I had to go in the rain. I was part working with the uh, IP lawyer. I got them out. Now, if you look at MNA killing, I wrote to the governor That's of in Enugu. Enugu State. I wrote to the governor of Enugu State. I said, you have been killed. Please set up judicial inquiry. Otherwise, we'll go to court. Youths, not just you, your citizens. Your citizens. I said, otherwise, we'll go to court. The governor brushed aside. I mean, courts in Enugu. Asking, over that yes, asking for mandamus on the state government to set up a judicial inquiry. The government is challenging, they fight on Africa with claiming nobody died. So, see that level of irresponsibility of state government. So, what has happened across South East, particularly, is a sense in which citizens have been made to see themselves as non citizens. We've been talking about unfair policing, citizenship rights. If you kill people, in cold blood. If you kill people without due process, it's uncons it's actually criminal. So the Nigerian states, unwittingly or wittingly, have acted criminal in many instances. That's the truth about it. And so some people explain this ugly phenomenon as a sort of you you really the police has become an enemy. Now look at if you go to South you see high level of policing per kilometer, excessive. It's in the Enugu corridor. You mm. see that from, from Obolafo to, to Onsuka, it's like a war zone. Mm. The and that's a, a distance of about 20 kilometers. Absolutely. You the meet nothing less than 30. I travel, I'm a road I travel by road. Mm. From here to you get to Enugu, I see from Abuja to mm. you get to Enugu or to uh, Ejulia, you won't see up to half of the police checkpoints you see from Obolafo to Upi Junction. Unbelievable. Okay, now. I, I drove a few days ago from Abuja to Lafia, and I did not, I was not accosted by any check. That's the point. I didn't see, that's a distance of over 250 kilometers. And then if you know the way the police behaves around security institution, that means extortion, repression. So the, the, the point is that it looks like some people have been pushed the wall, and the idea is to take a revenge. Many people have been killed. No accounting, no auditing of life. You see, let's put it this way. For example, Aquaibom. I just heard that the, the, the Air Force also. Uh, Military operation. operations. Area. Area operations. Uh, How can you bombard a Nigerian city because some criminals killed two, three police officers? Get them and put And also, them. we had also similar incidents in. Is there a full local government area of Benue State? No, no. no. So, so there's a sense in which our leaders have lost it. Let me tell you. The constitutionally, you can't deploy. That's a military operation. It has to be deployed through a protocol. Mm. You're also engaged bombarding a Nigerian city that is not in war against Nigeria. So you've not classified them as enemy combatant. These are criminals. You should use policing effort to fish out and punish strictly according to law. We also so, saw military yeah. operation in all. The governor said he, he I ordered it. How can the governor mm. order a military operation with the cons expected consequence, collateral damage that innocent persons? Mm. The military is not. The, 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 the military scouts. had always come out to tell us. It was professionally done. There's no, nothing there, there's that, no collateral look, We live damage. in this country. There's nothing professional about anywhere, any of our, our government is not even professional. Nothing is professional. Let's face the fact. I'm a lawyer. I do human rights. So I know Lawyers several, are professional. No, no, what I'm saying, I have several cases of persons who are victim of these professional activities. 
look at what has happened in Ebola with this police uh, prison escape now. If you look disorderly, mm. can't identify yourself, has no job, has no ID, I pity you. You could find yourself in prison. I, I used to do prison reform for the Catholics, so I know this is situations. These are what we deal with every day. So the question there is that it doesn't look responsible to unleash military on your citizens because of provocation. You have to be painstaking, fatherly, fish out the criminals, deal with them. Now the second point is that maybe people argue that maybe this is also a fifth columnist. I mean, people have been alleging these are all conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. Maybe people, people are sponsoring this in order to create opportunity for some kind of major military operation. I, I don't see why a state security agency will allow itself to be that, you know, driven to that extreme, crazy approach. But whatever it is, it is dangerous. This is time now for professionals in Southeast to stand up and start speaking against it. It's totally wrong. Is there a connection of IPOP, I, uh, ESN here? Because a lot of people have said uh, they established uh, a, a security outfit illegal. They've deployed. That there's a, the IG, former IG says mm -hmm. it is ESN, IPOP. Now, see, I hold the governors of South is responsible for every damage, quote unquote, that ESN and IPOP does. Do you know why? We have been on this deal with insecurity, especially with uh, a growing threat of uh, herdsmen violence. Look at what the governor of Ebony said a few days ago, mm. that he feels betrayed. The full and farmers, or headers rather, mm. that he had accommodated, provided uh, hospitality, were tipped off to leave before headers, killing headers, or government headers, banditry headers, attacked and killed 20 something persons in the community. He was crying. He, he also cried and shouted that he has credible information, he knows those responsible, and not has been he also raised that. So he, no, he knows and no arrest, no That's a question. Has that the IGP, is almost did the IGP happened. come out as he did, the former IGP, to say, Fulani Hessman did this, we're going to get them? He didn't say that. Now, this governor is regretting. Now, the point is that. They cost ESN to be because we have said set up the Amotoku kind of thing. But forget about Amotoku. Mm. If you look at the constitution, it is not true that security belongs to the federal government. Yeah. What the, as the second shadow said is police and security agencies mm. their management. So no state governor will appoint the police commissioner, the IG. Every state governor is responsible under mm. Section Five to as chief executive who is responsible for both the House of Assembly and the state government and the state executive to create laws that will protect their people. So why not create forest guards that number two? They, they did promise to create. They did Remember at some point yes, they met at that regional I, I was, I was, I was in the meeting. Any state even went and ahead, advertised. Recru recruited, but, so yes, to say. Yes. But then uh, they didn't uh, do the anti-grazing bill. Mm. Anti-grazing bill is not a bill about shutting people out. It's about managing the local. You see, the forest resources are unmanaged in Nigeria. We need to have management, governance. For example, you should know how many trees are there. You should know who goes in and who comes out. You should know what's going on. So this failure to govern and playing politics to please Abuja is what created this vacuum that IPOB or whoever is exploited. So when I hear people, people say, Sam, you don't attack IPOB. Why should I attack IPOB? IPOB has no franchise, no authorization. IPOB shouldn't be the one thinking and talking about the threat to villagers and farmers in Enugu, Imo, Anambra. It should be the governors so who are doing nothing. So they exploited a vacuum. So exactly. And so talking about IPOB doesn't make sense because there that, that can be three or four can become crazy and say they want to overthrow Nigeria and sit somewhere in Bonn or in Germany. You are going to be uh, talking about them. Talk about those who have authorization by electorates who are doing nothing. What are you afraid? Southeast government not, to not enact enough. a law. Do if nothing. you say not, no, not in in terms of uh, really, okay. see, in terms of laying the framework. So uh, I've had issues with them. I've been in the meeting, and the governor will attack us and say, you guys are always embarrassing us. He, they refused to do what they ought to do. And then they allowed IPOB or whoever to create, and by the way, this is about, it's important about this competition for affection. Mm. The people who are traumatized, who are brutalized, accept ECN. Because they see, without seeing the danger, mm. they are seeing the comfort that the immediate payoff, pay not looking at the, the long term. term. Yeah. My worry about this uh, formation is that they have a long term violence spirals off. And then we can see black on black violence, mm. we can see Southeast Southeast violence. Mm. So I'm not in support 
of any private militia or private security outfit. I'm in support of, of a control. government regulated. Mm -hmm. But when government is shy, don't know what to do, incompetent, inept, or politicized, afraid of his shadow, then you want me to come and be denouncing IPOB, ECN, that has no electoral mandate? When the governor in Southeast, the governors themselves are not doing what, okay, think, think about it. No matter how fake, uh, how ineffective it is, look at Amotoko. Mm -hmm. The governors went through a process, mm -hmm. They enacted a law, set up a structure. The constitution allows you as chief executive to do People complain about the federal government control. It's not true. All you just need to do is let the law be enacted by the state as an assembly. And by the way, the police, the police uses criminal code, which is a state law. Mm. So nothing stops a state government, a state executive, from saying before police does X, Y, you do this. The police will obey because the police does not, uh, there's no federal criminal code. Mm. Apart from those uh, regulatory agencies, uh, maybe custom, service, custom, mm. custom Excise Act and all that. The real criminal code, penal code, are state laws. So the state assembly can't make these laws to regulate how police does its work in their territory. So if you cannot, as a governor, manage the security issues in your state in a democratic, legitimate, effective manner. And then people, that's, see, don't forget that idea of government that people give government power. Mm. People take back the power themselves. Mm. Racta groups take power, and once people support them, they're the government. So if we do a competition, an election, a referendum, mm. IPOB will win the Southeast governors in terms of legitimacy and credibility. But it's a dangerous trend. And that's why we have said, Southeast major challenge is to fix governance new political leaders who are accountable to their people, who have no contracts to pursue in Abuja, who are not thinking about being vice president to anybody, who are proud to be Igbos and proud to be Nigerians, and who will not, who will not sacrifice the, the life of their people for pecuniary gain. Or appeasement to be seen as a nationalist. In fact, some of our human rights activists are in that fold. Some of them have denounced us and said we are IPO people. Mm. Because we had to go to court and challenge, how can you kill 27 youths who are doing exercises in MNA and Ugo State on the tag that they were IPOB. Even if they were, the, the, the punishment for belonging to an illegal organization, quote unquote, or a terrorist organization, it's not killing. Mm. They're not, you didn't say they were about to go and bomb somebody. You didn't say they were killing people and you stopped them. You said they were members of that kind of, that kind of thing. And the state governor sits there, does nothing. We ask Agbada, white Agbada up and down. And they fly to Abuja, come up and down, and then suddenly somebody in London creates something that is in the bush there, mm. securing people. And then you sit here in Abuja and think they can denounce it like that. So I hold the Southeast governors responsible for any harm, um, any ill that ECN, MASOP, or anybody does relating to insecurity because they are largely failed to deal with the crisis. Is, is there an opportunity for them to move swiftly, uh, to take back ordinarily what should belong to them? This is actually... This is but, the but unfortunately, uh, you mentioned, and I've heard some other sources, that this uh, ESN is quite very popular among the people in the Southeast. Because if you look at what happened in Onesha, for example, the Abu Gideon. By the way, what I say about our governors, I say about traditional rulers, and I say about the religious leaders who are not leading well, Abu Gidi, the Obi of Onisha, he spoke, took up, has always, uh, you know, he has not been part of who sold out IPO, but he's, he took, he stood up against them. And in Onisha, they had vigilante. Yeah, I saw, strong, I saw pictures strong of vigilante. their inauguration. So, Uniformed, yeah, exactly. well kitted. Exactly. So, that void has been taken. Mm. IPO, we cannot encroach. Because these guys are protecting themselves in legitimate constitutional manner. Mm. That has working with the... With state by the way, the, I will give himself was a vice chairman, is a vice chairman of the Anambra State, but he has to cascade locally. Look up if, so if you if you can scale up that approach and create real strong see now the Kanoise group will have no support if the f state governors are able to control their forests. This is not about fighting anybody, this is about ensuring see every act of lawlessness and criminality. Is, is, is illegal and government has, so if Fulani or evil headsmen are killing people, mm. it's the governor's responsibility to ensure it doesn't happen. No appeasement. Mm. You don't owe uh, Sokoto or Kanu or Abuja any apology for putting the life of Nigerian citizens in your state. After us, a lot of my guests have made it clear that that toga 
the majority, the respons the primary objective of every government is security and welfare of their people. That we have a mistake here of applying it strictly and only to the federal government at all levels, state, local. That it is their primary responsibility. That's what Section that Five every says. Governor, exactly. Every local government chairman exactly. should be alive to that responsibility and do everything within uh, the legal uh, within uh, authority within our laws to set up whatever structure, it, take up any action absolutely. to protect their people. That is primary. That's why I said, in spite of how incoherent our concern is, it never said that security is a federal preserve. It simply says that policing, the police force, is the, the federal legislative uh, uh, matter to legislate about police. But, for example, age grade is a security outfit. Mm -hmm. Today, in the discourse of security, we talk about human security, integrated security. So, a governor who is who has who is creating, we have unemployed people. Why not mobilize them, teach them about how to early warning signal, you know, um, uh, um, uh, how to read uh, um, uh, intelligence, uh, intelligence gathering. gathering, how to coordinate. For example, database of everybody. There's no reason why you should, you should not have a database of all, any single cow, any single goat fowl. In modern de governance, it's all about data. It's all about and planning. And planning. So no governor should, to, in today's threat, to, we've seen communities sacked in Benue, in everywhere. In, why should you allow the forest your, your, your farms unprotected. It's not about Fulani, Hausa, Yoruba farmers. It's simply about dealing with insecurity. And you deal with insecurity as they arise. Today we are dealing with insecurity around farmer uh, headers conflict. It's a major one. So the primary issue now is that this is an opportunity for the government to take. Every crisis, he said that the worst thing to waste is a crisis. Now look at this Imo thing now. If the governor of Imo State can rise up to that heroic level of leadership, he's going to win a lot of people. Mm. He starts speaking to the people. He starts dealing with the issues that people talk about. He starts talking about how do we make the state more secure. For example, why should police stations be easy targets? What's behind it? Why should people just wake up in the morning and take out police officers? Mm -hmm. That's heinous. As far as I'm concerned, yeah, it's elsewhere a, it's, 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 it's never a crime. It's, in nobody New should York, accept it. For, for reporting it, you get $10,000 reward. In fact, the government should be telling citizens, look, a deal, new deal. I protect you. 100%. You come out with the information. Let's take out, let's take the job away from ESN. And I'm totally in support of it. I am not in support of a private militia providing security. I'm against it. Because I'm against violence. We, we, we saw what happened with the, uh, what's the name of that one in our nature? Uh, I'm trying to. Uh, 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 Bas uh, Bakase Boys. Bakase or? Boys. Yes. They started, they, it just is the same everywhere. It doesn't private work well. militia. It they doesn't start work well. well and end up that losing why, control. In theory, we say revolutions eat their children. Mm. I'm not in support of violent state. I'm in support of reforming state. I'm, I, I'm a reformist. I want you to focus on governance and rule of law. And that's a crisis in Nigeria. If you fail to reform, first, Nigerian crisis is a crisis of hegemony. Mm. People are not talking about protection, talking about hegemony. The Nigerian police and military has been defined to hegemonist forces. The idea is to, after the civil war, keep people in control, mm -hmm. not protect them. Containment. For example, how can, even if with the central police, shouldn't you know data about everything in, so if you want to run a centralized police, for Christ's sake, run it efficiently. Don't just trust a police that gives information of who is breaking out of Nigeria, who is holding the conference against government. That's regime protection. Run a central police that has datable information about going on in the local area. If you must control the local areas for Abuja, then be effective, be on the ground. Have data. Who comes in? Who went out? What's going? So the focus of policing should be protecting people, not hegemony, not focusing on stopping separation. We, Nigeria was co contracted to protect the hegemony, British hegemony. Before then, we had feudal hegemony. The, the, the revolution of 1806 continuing created contested hegemony. Post-colonialism, we have Contention over hegemony. So the issues around restructuring, self-determination, is to free Nigeria from hegemony. And the Buhari administration has worsened the hegemonial crisis because it has dragged the whole APC within the narrow prism of protecting the hegemony. And that's what people talk about. That's what has actually accentuated this very widespread insurrections, protests, and criminality. 